Okay, welcome back. Um, th this is Sian Hu, and we're talking about or unpacking the use of IESVE as a building performance assessment tool. Um, up to now, we've looked into generating the geometry using um, AP Locate to ultimately define the location and the climate um, file or the weather file for the project. And then we've also used um, Suncast as a means for us to assess <clears throat> the degree of exposure that this, that this model or space will have. And again, um, just to reiterate again, it's, it's based on um, the use of this program is really more linked to what you're using it for, and then you can use the tools for that appropriately. But we're following a, a basic um, protocol to ultimately get to do thermal analyses of the building interior, and that will also allow us to do some energy energy calculations in the end. Um, okay, so you've you've completed your sun cost model. You, you you've, you've done full year analysis. That's important, and if you've, you've saved it, so it's available for the the Apache analysis simulation that will take place. Now the problem is this simulation um, cannot really be run at the moment because what we have is geometry, but we do not know who uses the building, how often do they use the building, what type of energy inputs are there, and what the construction materials are. And that you can't necessarily draw, and that's something that's different from how you would have used it in Revit, or in SketchUp, or any other um, drafting program or modeling program is effectively you draw the content or knowledge into the project. But this is not how it works in IES. Um, you draw the basics and then the rest gets input through a through a series of tools and systems that we define it. And what you need to do next is you need to click on the what we call tabular DTM or the building template manager. I think it's easier to talk through it that through that way. Now what you'll see is the building template manager actually allows you to define a number of aspects. You can define the space attributes, so types of spaces that we use. It's not too critical. Um, the construction, which we will discuss. Um, the macro flow, which is about how windows open or, or close. And um, the, temp the temp thermal conditions, which really talks about the energy inputs in a building, so it, um, be it thermal energy or what, uh, other energies. And then the lighting conditions, which looks into the radiance, the lighting quality inside um, a building, and um, then the radiance if you do, are using the radiance tool, which which we will do later. So for now, we'll only really look at the thermal conditions and the Apache constructions um, in order to do a basic um, analysis. Okay, so this building template manager can be accessed at any time, whether you're in the model it or you're in Vista and so forth, you can really, it's, it's, it's a basic setup through which you can define the models. And I think the one thing to think about is that the way um, IES works is that it, it sets up template conditions that you can define to different spaces, and then you can actually change those conditions in specific cases. Um, so it argues that you, you have a basic con template um, definition for the whole building and as you move into detail you might actually say no wait a minute that wall is different or this roof is different and so forth or this space gets used differently um, we will use it on a very generic way at the moment but I, and ultimately you can certainly add more detail as needed okay so before you do this and this is something we just we discussed in class I'm sure and I will just pull it up again um, before you, you can actually start populating this, it's important to, to set up your, your, your data set. And I, I find it's better to use Excel for this. Um, this is an old student's um, work, so I've just removed the project name and the, the student name there. Um, but I have it, I've used it in a number of my projects. Um, in, in other research projects, right, if I could just I'll put it up here. For instance, I'll, I'll use the same template. It's a bit more detailed and long-winded because it also becomes a a, 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 a a tool through which I document and keep track of changes that gets made and references and so forth. But what I find is when you start modeling the building, um, somewhere you have to keep track of what the information that you're putting in. And what's critical here and what you'll see here is 
I always add notes and I start saying, okay, wait a minute, what type of building am I designing? I'm designing an office building. This was specifically one with a greenhouse on top. Um, you give basic information. But for instance here, the building occupancy is G1. And that's based on the SAND regulations. Now, why do I want to add that in the notes? Um, because I would like to refer back to it. The one thing that's important is, and that's a little rule that, well, not a little, it's quite really important, is in any simulation process, if you have gar they call garbage in, garbage out principle. If you, if you, if if the inputs are shoddy and not well defined and all over the place, then your outputs will be messy, and that's why um, having an Excel spreadsheet where you define the different types of spaces you've got, you probably might use some coding so that you know what you refer to, and you and you and you talk about where you've referenced it. So. When you start doing simulation modeling, it's important to to base it either within the current, either you'll say, I'll, I'll follow the current regulation requirements, so I'll make a base case of it, or I would have measured it on site, so I've documented it, or I will use um, best practice um, definitions in the end. So you'll see, for instance, here we would say, this in this model where we give it energy consumption, we actually have a plug load density of 15 watts per square meter and that's actually based on a case study that Howard Harris um, defined uh, undertaken and he uses it as a in, in his method uh, in, in, in his simulations and I would say well that's a good a good start so so similarly you can define the lighting density and as you continue through now um, you'll see here for instance in this project we then said okay but we want to actually how do we define our, and this was for a very theoretical project, how do we find the window to floor ratio? And we said, well, we'll base it on a study by Scallon, for instance. So this is a good suggestion to continue with that in, in, um, 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 inquiry. And so and that, that's, I think, where, where it's really important in the end. Is that continuously, you're actually keeping track of how you've, define these various parameters that you're using for the building. And sometimes you might actually get it from existing studies and you will put the figures there and you'll, you'll have the, the, the information there. And um, sometimes the construction material will be um, yeah, just typical material you'll, you'll have. So either way, that's it's based for multiple types of projects. So in your case, I've shared this with you. Please do go and fill it in. Um, this is a project where it's in the urban quarter. It talks about who uses the building. So we've got already the, a number of people per square meter because we know there's two people. This project doesn't follow um, a base scenario which is based on SUN's regulations or standards, but rather um, what's actually documented on site. So it meant that going to um, the building, documenting who uses energy, how much they used, and then to working that back to a um, watt hours per or, or watts per square meter um which is not not that simple always sometimes you will simply use what is what is defined as as good um, um assumptions and one would say a good plug load density or lighting density and and you'll see in there you will define how people use the spaces how often they use the spaces and then also here for instance which i think was valuable is that the, the student also defined the type of material, the description of the material, and the R value in the end. This is defined in, 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 in IES, but again, I think it's a great way to start defining your understanding and what you're working with. And again, you, you, once you've got this table populated, it makes the modeling process much easier, where, where you can simply go through and adjust the aspects. You don't need to go and look for the information, and then come back and add some information and so forth. Okay, so um, just a good, good, good practice to, to start developing or filling in your data sheet before you add the information into the IES model. Um, in the next video, we'll, we'll start unpacking how do we actually um, add the information into the model and what do those different aspects mean. Um, good, thank you. See you in the next video.